In 2003, Chile began to see a wave of tragic incidents involving young children. It begins on July 18th of 2003. A 12-year-old boy named Hans Kersayas Nunez was found hanging from a contraption made of packing tape and a bucket. He had suffocated to death. A few months later, in September, the city of Valparaiso was struck by two similar deaths of young children, just weeks apart. And then later in October, there would be another such case in Cartagena. This time, fortunately, the child survived. But there seemed to be a pattern developing here. What could possibly be the cause? According to some, it was Yu-Gi-Oh! For today's video, let's take a trip to Chile and explore the mystery of the Hanged Man's card. This video is sponsored by Rocket Money. I'm subscribed to so many services that I don't even use anymore. And then what happens is I forget I got them, but I keep paying them. And that's what a lot of these companies are banking on. That you'll just keep paying them forever without even using the service because either you forget or you're lazy. That's where Rocket Money comes in. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. And one of their best features is canceling unwanted subscriptions. It safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app with just a couple taps. No need to worry about customer service calls. Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year, with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. You can also analyze your spending habits to create a custom budget that works with your lifestyle. Automatically monitor your spending by category and get notifications when you've exceeded your limits. Take control of your finances today. Go to rocketmoney.com wang to get started for free. Moral panics over the media people consume is a tale as old as time. Here in the US, a lot of you will remember crimes being linked to things like metal bands, or games like Doom or Mortal Kombat. And for that matter, we had a bout of branding Pokemon as satanic propaganda. So, so Pokemon is a game that teaches children how to enter into the world of witchcraft, how to cast spells. Pokemon world is a world of the demonic. But this isn't just an American phenomenon. These tales are echoed by the story from Chile, but the story takes some of its own bizarre turns. On September 23rd, a 13-year-old boy named Patricio Mieres came home from school. He was excited to tell his father about the good grades he had gotten on multiple tests that day. Mere hours later, Patricio's father would find him hanging from a rope in their bathroom. Why would a happy child who was having an especially good day do such a thing? It just defies all reason. A few weeks later, on October 10th, a nine-year-old boy named Camilo Latrac would also be found hanging. This time, the child was found tied to a t-shirt from his bunk bed. Now, anytime a child dies, it's a tragedy. But it's all the more bizarre when you start to see a pattern of happy children from good families with good grades, no trouble at school, when all of a sudden they start offing themselves for seemingly no reason. So people are desperate for answers at this point. And Patrizio's father would have an explanation. He claimed that his son died from imitating Yu-Gi-Oh! which, personally, I'm not a hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh! fan by any means. But from what I've seen, that doesn't seem like something that happens in the show. In any case, Patrizio's father would join Valparaiso representative Laura Soto in bringing a complaint to the National Television Council. She demanded that the channel that aired Yu-Gi-Oh! Megavision remove the show. This has to be a crusade of the entire Chilean society, of the parents to take care of the little children, of the teachers to talk to the children about what the situation is like, and naturally also of television and those who are commercializing all this activity. And here's where all the crazy details start to get involved. It's said that there's an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! where a character hangs himself to death to resurrect with more powers. Additionally, there was supposedly also a card for the actual game claiming that 13 children would be hanged and resurrect and become immortal. Fans of the series, of course, said that there is no such thing. It's almost like, imagine if your congressperson went and they said that we have to ban Pokemon because of Lavender Town Syndrome. It's even worse than that because at least Lavender Town exists in the game. Furthermore, at this point, the police had determined that these deaths were accidental which really wouldn't line up with the instructions in these supposed cards. In addition to these mystery cards and episodes, there were supposedly variations of the game that children were playing amongst themselves. A version where the losers have to cut themselves with scissors, or beat themselves up. In her statement, she compared Yu-Gi-Oh! to Russian Roulette. But you know, it is a thing that sometimes children will make their own off-label versions of game rules. I found that I actually do have a decent amount of Chilean viewers, so do any of you remember playing these kinds of variations of Yu-Gi-Oh! as a kid? Have any of you guys cut yourselves for Yu-Gi-Oh! 
Interestingly though, in Laura Soto's complaint, she also spoke of a fourth incident in Cartagena where an eight-year-old attempted to hang himself, but thankfully he was found before he could finish the job. According to this child's father who had spoken with Laura Soto directly, it was the child himself who told him that this came from Yu-Gi-Oh. It is important to note though that the identity of the child and his father were kept secret because the child was currently undergoing treatment. In response to the representative's complaint, Patricia Pollitzer, the president of the National Television Council, said that they did not have the ability to remove the show as it would be a censorship issue. Furthermore, she cited studies that the organization had previously done regarding Yu-Gi-Oh! and their findings indicated that there was no excessive levels of violence in the show. Of course, with the new controversy now, they would be doing new studies. Megavision also responded by citing the same research. They also mentioned that the show had aired in over 100 countries without any similar incidents. Finally, they also noted that if they had to, they would exercise all legal options available to protect their rights. Now, after the story made the news, urban legends around Yu-Gi-Oh! would take on a life of their own. In particular, there was a notion of a rare card known the Hangman. This would be the name attributed to the card that Laura Soto spoke of, the one with 13 children have to be hanged. Supposedly, the card instructed kids to do this and they believed it was real. And it's important to note here that according to all the research on this topic, children at the ages affected by this are very able to distinguish fiction from reality at this point. And this was a point that was commonly brought up in the debate over the show. Furthermore, there is no evidence whatsoever that this card actually existed. There currently is a Yu-Gi-Oh card called The Hanged Man, but it didn't appear on the show until 2005, two years after these incidents and it wasn't released as a physical card until much later. The artwork of the card depicts a cocoon type thing and has nothing even resembling the supposed 13 deaths text. I spoke to Javiera Vega who covered this story for Grimoire of Horror and was actually the one who brought this story to my attention. She told me that at the time this was all going on, she was deep into Yu-Gi-Oh in Chile. And she said there were a lot of bootleg cards around that at some point she did recall seeing some bootleg hangman cards, but that wasn't until much, much later. In her original coverage, here's what she had to say about the Hangman card. Over time, the original urban legend evolved and took on various forms. Some claimed that the Hangman card was a bootleg, while others added sinister elements, suggesting that it was created by a mysterious satanic cult. As the rumors spread, parents in different countries became increasingly concerned about the potential dangers of the game and its influence on impressionable minds. Schools in some regions even went so far as banning Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The urban legend became further distorted with some kids falsely claiming that they knew someone who died after encountering the mysterious card. And as the story and the urban legend spread, journalists began to try and tie more and more cases to Yu-Gi-Oh! Causing a full-blown moral panic in Latin America over both the cartoon and the game. That being said, although there obviously was no official Yu-Gi-Oh! media instructing kids to hang themselves, it is possible that somehow something happened around this time where kids got Yu-Gi-Oh wrapped up in something. And the fourth kid claiming himself that Yu-Gi-Oh was involved in this got me thinking even more in this direction. Granted, because he was never identified, there is a possibility that the fourth child never really existed. It could have been fabricated by Laura Soto or the person who contacted her, but for argument's sake, let's assume it's real. It all reminds me a lot of the choking game. This thing where kids would choke themselves to feel high without doing drugs. The idea of this phenomenon has come and gone since at least 1995, with a little spike in 2008, and most recently making the news in 2021 on TikTok as the Blackout Challenge. Now, it's something that its prevalence has always been exaggerated for the sake of whipping people up into some kind of media frenzy, but there were some deaths connected to it, and the incidents resemble what happened with these kids in Chile. I can imagine that somehow a group of kids might have merged the choking game with Yu-Gi-Oh! and then it spreads around to other groups of kids, kind of like that S that everyone knew how to drew. But even if this is what happened, banning Yu-Gi-Oh! wouldn't solve that. Because now at this point, we're talking lore and game rules that are completely made up by the kids themselves. If Yu-Gi-Oh! gets banned, there's nothing to stop that from doing it with something else. But ultimately, I think this is just a case of what happens when something tragic and seemingly unexplainable happens and people are desperate for answers. Someone or something has to be at fault. But anyway, that's the story of the Hangman's card. Once again, thanks to Javiera for the story tip. If you like this video, turn on notifications and check out my video about Jenkum. I'm out.